You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive Scottish football content. Hi folks and welcome to a special episode of the SM Media Scottish Women's Football Show. I'm Scott McPike, it's an absolute pleasure to be your host as always. We've got a pretty quiet weekend, there's not a lot of league action taking place, in fact there's none at all. But we thought we'd have a wee special episode, we've got a lot to talk about based on the park as well, but it's a pleasure to welcome this week's special guest. I'm delighted to welcome the Chair of Scottish Women's Football, Vivian McLaren. Vivian, welcome to the show, it's a pleasure to have you on, thanks very much for agreeing to us. Oh no, thank you so much for having me on. I, I'm a, a big fan of all the stuff that you do, so I'm really happy to be here on a on a wet Sunday night. What more would I want to be doing? It's a really wild night, yeah. It's the same everywhere. I think we're I think we're better off inside talking about women's football than outside absolutely. watching it probably today, is that fair to say? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. It's obviously uh it's going to be a quiet week. There's not a lot happening in terms of kind of league action. The league's on a kind of break, obviously the internationals, but we have to start with obviously the game last last week at Hamden. Yeah, I think you've kind of summed up well there your reaction. It was <laughs> it was breathtaking in a weird way. It was a weird way, obviously, at the end when it was over and Scotland obviously got the win. You were thinking one step to the World Cup, but also what an entertaining but also weird game of football because it what it was one of those games where you couldn't. It's the same with the men's men's as well to a degree that you you don't get a minute's peace watch in Scotland. You're always on the edge of your seat and not in a good way. And this was one of those games, but the substitution worked excellently well. We'll get into it in a bit more detail. But first of all, as a whole, how big is this a how big a result is this for women's football in Scotland? It's it's oh it's a massive, massive result. You know, I've been watching Scotland since you know, I was actually at the the last time they played Austria in 2002, I think it was, I was actually at that, uh, you know, and they were wearing the main shirts and, you know, they, they, they had very little uh, apart from their heart, you know, uh, on that pitch. So to see where we are now and to see that we, we could actually get to another World Cup, it's, it's, it's just unbelievable because what, what happens is, you know, when we when the Euros, you know, and then the World Cup, you you just see the interest. You know, people, mm. we girls that have been thinking, oh, I'd quite like to, but I don't know how. Mm. Or like, mum, dad, you know, I want to, I want to get involved. How do I do it? So you see that massive uptick, and it's also the exposure. You know, mm. um, I've been on the board since twenty fourteen, and I've been fighting, battering down doors to get exposure for the game because yeah. you know that whole thing. If people don't see that it's there. They won't be interested to come. They won't want. They won't know they can participate. You know, it's all about role models, all of that. So, it's an absolutely a, a massive result. Massive result. You know, Austria ranked higher than us. You know, going into that game, they probably felt quite confident. Yeah. Um, and I think as a performance, they were all. They just battled for everything. That 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 was the big. The big thing for me is that every single player on that pitch battled and battled and battled. They didn't give up. You know, we've seen games before where maybe heads have gone down, you know, and you're, you're getting frustrated and then the players are getting frustrated, but they just kept on going and that pitch was so heavy. You know, I didn't realise how windy it was until mm-hmm. I looked up you know, under the lights and you could see the swirling. I'm like, why are these corners just not going in? Mm-hmm. Um, it was a huge result. And, and as you say, the substitution... You know, England have been so successful because she's been bringing on players, you know, 70 minutes, changing a game. You know, Abby came on and she's just been, she's such, you know, I've watched her play for for many, many years and she's such a great uh, holder-upper of the ball. You know, she's just, she's just fantastic. She's so strong. You know, if you look at her core, she's a strong, strong player. And uh, I just thought it was so well-deserved. Um but changed the game and and Pedro made exactly the right substitutions because it's not easy. Sometimes you don't know. You know, you think when you bring on substitutions that the right thing to do at the time. But you, you know, it, when that player goes over the line, 
It's up to them. Yeah. And I think all of the players in that squad, um, you know, really stepped up. Um, and looking ahead to obviously Tuesday night, we'll go through kind of Tuesday night's getting the the Ireland game in a bit more detail later on. We'll do a wee preview and we'll get a, a prediction from you later, so we'll put you in the spot later on. But looking at it from this kind of perspective as well, you see the other two, two results. Wales obviously got a tight victory and Portugal beat Belgium. With obviously this weird way they've done the, the playoffs where you can win your, both your games, but you still might not qualify. Is there a thing as well that you've got to hand it to the the team as well for their character when you've got that in the back of your mind that you could put your all into this, win both games and still not get there, which I don't agree with. I think it's the wrong way to do it. But this is obviously, Tuesday's game is so big and this is so big for the country. We've been at a World Cup and we've obviously had that moment, but this is, this feels a bit different because I think the game's evolved. I think there's more, I think there's more of a chance. Now we see obviously with England uh, last summer, it gripped the whole nation there mm-hmm. and it, even here to a degree as well so what's kind of different about this one kind of this game on Tuesday night compared to obviously when Scotland got to France four years ago how big is this compared to then I think um, you know because it, I think it's because it, it, it's front and centre like it's this game you know whereas yeah. previously we've been lucky with other results going different ways and then actually, you know, I mean, that game where I think we were 2-0 down away and we won 3-2 mm-hmm. uh, against, who was that? Was it Poland? I can't remember. The, this game, you know, the permutations are ridiculous. Like, I, I looked at a Twitter thread the other day and I read, I tried to make sense of it online as well and, and there's so many different permutations. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, all we can do is focus on what we have to do and, and I spoke to um, Pedro actually at the at the, the men's Ukraine game. And it was really interesting because he was talking about the one of the things he's focusing on is the whole mentality of the squad and actually thinking about things that could occur during a match mm. uh, and actually preparing the players so that if something did go against them or did go wrong on the pitch in that game, that because they've mentally prepared for it in advance it won't have as big an impact on them. Mm-hmm. So I really like the focus that he's got. So he's basically looking at each game and everything that could possibly happen within each game rather than have the players think, right, well, if they do that and they do this, it's that old adage of we're just focusing on this game mm-hmm. and that's what we get all their, get all their perspective on. So he's doing a lot of work on that side of it. And I think that you know if you, if you go back to the Spain game, it's night and day, you know. It's night yeah. and day. I mean, I, I, when that when that result came in, you know, you just thought, right, well, where's this going to go? And he's worked really, really hard. You can see that they they're all brilliant players. So that that technical ability is not anything that we need to worry about. It's the mental part of it. It's just as important. And 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 you can see that. I think they're playing much more like a group who are fighting for each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so this game, I mean, it's massive, you know, and you've got lovely Vera Pau, who was the person that, that set Scotland women. You know, she was the first person that came in and said, nutrition, yeah. training, performance. She's the first person that came in. You know, she's was obviously Bert Van Lingen was at Rangers at the time, and she came in to take over the, the national women's set-up. I think she was there from, like, 98 to maybe 2004 or something like that. But she, she set... Scotland's women on that path mm-hmm. to to being more professional, more focused, fighting for what the women needed to get. And then obviously Anna's come in and done that and taken them further. And then Shelley's come in mm-hmm. and taken that and even further. And now you've got Pedro. So I think it's a hugely important game because like you said, it's unlike we've not been in a situation like this where I think we've had as much support, investment and focus. And it's great to see. And I think we're we're in a really good position. Um, I know that they'll be a really tough side. I mean, I was looking at the rankings, you know, we're 23rd, they're 26th. Mm-hmm. You know, Austria were ranked higher than us. It's, it's basically a cup final on the night, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and it's that thing as well. It's that permutation that what I was, what I was kind of thinking as well was, 
with the game last week as well, one nil a late one nil win was enough. That was always this one that like, you could go one nil up early, and because of the permutation, you can't settle down. You you in your in your head you'll be thinking we need to score another, we need that bit of safety, and that that can that can go one of two ways. It cannot either go the great way when you go and win comfortably, or it goes another way and you, it's in complacency. So that's a that I'm sure you'll agree with that. That is a it's, weird balance I, to be to be involved in, particularly a game it, like this. Yeah, they're, they're, exactly. There's never a unique, you know, it, it, sorry, it's a really unique position because I've been at from about the playoffs against the Netherlands, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in Tynecastle back then where we had to win and heads went down and, and I think they beat us 2 0, I think, at, at the time. This, and that was very clear, we had to win that game, yeah. right? This game, you know, I'm sure they'll have had to do a lot of work in the background to get minds focused because. You know what the other group? Uh, I think it's got six in it. Is it we've got five or they've got six? So the so the, the so the results against the bottom team are being discounted, mm-hmm. right? The goal difference, you know. So I think it will be very difficult for for the girls not to be thinking. I think they'll just have to focus on trying to win the game by as many goals and not concede. I think it's as I think it's going to have to be as simple as that. Mm-hmm. And not about everything else because that's you know. As Pedro said, you know, you have we can only be in control of what we are doing. So if they just focus on, you know, controlling their performance, get a win out of it, and try and score as many goals as we can, that's all we can do. We've done our bit. Worst case scenario, we're in a playoff tournament in February, mm-hmm. which I mean, I just think I just don't get all of them. I mean, even in in the in the men's game now, the ab the amount of roots in to think it's just so confusing so it would have been much easier I think if we had to win this game by two goals mm-hmm. and that's it everyone's clear so I think we'll probably have had to work on that and just say don't just block out everything else focus on what you need to do Um. so yeah it is, it's, it's a difficult one because I've actually tried to look at all the different I, I actually it just blows my mind I don't know how anyone can do a Twitter thread on it as, as it's a weird one, and we'll we'll come back to it later on because we're we're obviously going to make a wee prediction on it later on. But it's been it's been obviously apart from obviously kind of league King's been quiet for a couple of weeks. There's obviously been some big news with the kind of women's game. Obviously the the TV deal SWPL was now going to be on Sky Sports. I want to kind of get your thoughts on that. Obviously, what's your your personal opinion on it? Obviously, we know it as a really good thing for the women's game because we have more exposure for it. Sky, I think, have fair to say they've severely invested in the women's game, particularly in England in the past couple of years. So having that avenue for the Scottish game, I think, will be brilliant for them. There is other concerns I have about it. I'll maybe touch on with you in a couple of minutes. But overall, your opinion, obviously, your your kind of job is thinking of the best for the women's game in Scotland overall. What's your thoughts on this? Do you think it is a good deal? Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, again, if I go back to 2015, I think, um, when we were, you know, I mean, if we go actually back 2014, right, mm-hmm. uh, when I joined the board, we had no brand, no no social media, no website, no nothing, right? You literally had nothing. There, there, was, a, there was a blue stick person in a yellow shield, and that was SWF, and it was a page on the SFA website. And we had all these competitions and we had Premier Leagues, all, all these competitions. And I'm like, how is this professional? Why would you want to play, participate? And then why would you want to invest in anything like that? So, you know, we've got brands across all the competitions, websites, social media, all of that stuff. And then, you know, it's trying to build up so that people then go, do you know what? That's a really attractive bit. I want to get involved in women's sport, but people don't just write a check. You know, you have to go, well, what exposure can you get? We are a professional organisation. We're trying to do the best for women and girls. So I think um, Sky, uh, we engaged with Sky, I think in 2015, way back, um, because we were, we actually live streamed um, some of the finals, uh, I think, uh, on YouTube. And it was the first time that anyone had really ever done that um, in Scotland. Uh, in football, actually, we, we live streamed because we didn't have any you know, KPLZ, and, I, and my day job is is digital and, and marketing. So I'm like, well, let's just live stream, yeah. and did that. 
and then we, we were started to build relationships with Sky at the time. And they used to actually send cameras just to, to, to be able to beam back goals. Mm-hmm. You know, so they'll we'll send some cameras, we'll do that. And then we obviously did the deal, the broadcast deal with Alipa. Mm-hmm. Was, was was 2018. We also got Scottish Cup sponsors in at that point and a couple of other things. So um, I think uh, at the time of the Alipa deal, we had a, a kind of media expert who, who was advising us um, who, who kindly did a bit of an audit for us, who did a bit of a temperature check, you know, of, of the people, because we were, we were speaking to a few people at the time in Scotland and, and uh, in England about how we could get involved and, and, and get more people, open up that access to our games, really. And they did a bit of an audit for us and a temperature check, you know, about who was interested, who wasn't, who was waiting. And I think at that point, you, you saw quite a few big players wanting to take a step back and see how things developed. You know, and Alipa have been wonderful. You know, they did the same for Pro 14 Rugby. You know, they were the, the main people at that point. And then that got, that did so well, it then went to Premier Sports, I think. So I think there's been a lot of uh, broadcast people trying to see how the game would grow, mm-hmm. what exposure, how it would develop. So to get to the point where they want to actually pay for games uh, is huge. It's yeah. huge. Uh, I, I was lucky enough to spend time with Baroness Sue Campbell at the FA um, a few years ago um, just to talk about you know what they were doing and how she works things and, and what their strategy was because in the, at the FA, uh, they cover the whole game. So they are the national team and, and, and basically everything else, although they might, they're might they split off into kind of sub-brands. And, uh, you know, she was very honest uh, about, you know, the, the situation they were in at the time and that they, they might have had a deal at that point, but they didn't feel they were getting the right exposure. So it's fine to have a deal. But if the if the broadcast fan isn't really engaging and isn't actually wanting to do much to big it up, and that's always been something that people are fed back on, you know, can we have, you know, previews and uh, and, and post-match, you know, just like they do with, with a lot of the main skis. But that takes time, you know, you have yeah. to build that up and, and that professionalism up. So uh, it's 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 very it's a very important step um in our game and it might not be tons and tons of games uh but you've got it's a start and you've mm-hmm. got Alpha as well you know five years ago uh where there are many clubs uh streaming or taking photographs of their women's games even at the highest level no there wasn't you know now you know, when when we were looking at uh, you know, when we're pushing out the fixtures and and uh, what the WPL are doing now, you know, you've got you know, yep, being live streamed on here, you know, live stream here, all of that. Um, so it's it's a massive step because I think what you'll find is that you know, and and this is my opinion, I think a lot of the broadcasters were like, ah, the quality's not good enough yet. You know. There's maybe a couple of teams that are decent, but we don't think the quality is good enough. And that's an opinion. Uh, I think now we have a lot of very strong, consistent teams, whereas in the past we maybe haven't. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a massive change in suddenly clubs waking up to the fact that actually, you know, women's sport and women's football is a very important thing and it shouldn't just be hived off to you know a community trust part of this of the club and i'm not saying that that's doesn't work for some but it it has to sit as part of an overall club and it has to be treated as something that is equal because it you know is equal yes men's football is a, is a hugely different thing um of course it is uh but you know the women's game is equally important uh and and until it gets given that that importance at clubs, you're not going to see revenue coming in. And you can see that the clubs that are making it important are getting sponsors in. Mm-hmm. Some of them are significant amounts of money in sponsorship because people want to invest in the women's game. And that is massive as well. So all of these things together, plus the national team, is only going to take things forward again until we've got a deal that covers 
the majority of games uh, in the SWPL and the national team. And see the kind of, I I I can I un, I understand all of that and think that's obviously a a kind of great description you put into. But the two things that I've thought about that since it came out that this was obviously going to be the plan was obviously with the SWPL kind of becoming involved more in the SBFL umbrella kind of during the summer. Was yep. that always like when? Because I I've been on record on other shows saying that I think it's been a very rash decision from the the men's game to do this deal so quickly. I think it's obviously that's maybe a situation for our day. But you look at the you look at the way the market's going, particularly with TV rights. Yeah. Why are you signing an extension three years before it's up? That's my way of looking at it. But also yeah. when you see was this all was this the plan when the the, the two SWPL leagues kind of moved into that umbrella. Was that always the plan of for, for going that direction, do you think? Or? I, think um, I think probably there was an assumption that uh, there would be something extra mm-hmm. that would come from it. Um, I think you're right that there, there are two arguments. One is women's football is not a bolt on to the men's game. Mm-hmm. It's not a, we'll take that and then we'll just throw those in, right? And then there's another argument that is, you know, the women's game needs to be seen in its own. Yeah, absolutely. Because, uh, you know, you might find that in three years' time, uh, the SWPL is, is, is worth significantly more in terms of that kind of investment. Mm-hmm. Now. So I'm sure that Fiona and those guys will be will be will be will be taking a, a look at that to see well how does how does that vary because I think is it a seven is it seven season twenty twenty nine so yeah it'll be seven seasons so I would assume I think it's it's, it's great that Sky are saying that are getting involved yeah but you to your point yeah I mean in two or three years time the game might be treble the value that it is now. Correct. Ace, then those rights are worth a heck of a lot more than they have been sold for now and for seven years. So there might be, I don't know, because I, I don't know what the contractual part of it is, but um, you know, usually there in other kind of commercial contracts, there's, there's that review period. You know, mm. there, there's a bit of, okay, well, let's have a look. So I don't know if, if that's set in stone. Uh, for seven years, I would, I probably would doubt it. I think that's a bit short sighted to say that's the value, and it won't change for seven years because it's like house prices, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And as the exposure grows, so yeah, so yeah, there are, there are people who are, you know, rightly saying, well, is that just a boat on to to what's to the men's game? Um, I don't think knowing Fiona as, as as well as I do, I don't think that's something that she would have, you know, allowed to to happen. So, from that perspective, uh, I do think that the value of the game will be even more than it is in three years' time. So, or even two years' time. So, I would hope that that's something that's reviewed, and then you know, Sky will say, "Well, do you know what? Actually, those rights are worth more. Mm-hmm. So we're going to give her." I don't know how how those type of contracts work from that perspective because the contracts we've had before have been obviously with, with Alipa, um, which isn't a commercial mm-hmm. organisation. But, um, you know, I think it's it shows uh, it shows a desire uh, to invest and it also shows um, a thought process that does see the fact that there's longevity in it. But I would think that, yeah, if, if things dramatically you know for example if every single team in pl one is full-time professional within the next three years those clubs are going to say well do you know what we actually we need to be generating more mm-hmm. uh, but the, our products be even better yeah as well and i would think that that's a very kind of obvious and sensible conversation that that, that they'll be having and i'm sure that fiona will be looking at that but yeah I see the point I, I do see that and a few people have said to me well is that a good thing any anyone that wants to put money into the game is a good thing I think um, you know why 
you know Scottish women's football is has has been doing what we've been doing for 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 all these you know certainly the past eight years, is that we are focusing one hundred percent on the women and girls game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we're not we're not looking elsewhere. It's only on that whether mm-hmm. it's child will protection, um, whether it's commercial sponsors, whether it's trying to increase criteria and pathways. That's all we are doing. So, um, you know it's important that that continues um, no matter where the league's sitting. I'm sure that will be the case. And the other kind of thing that I've kind of looked at, a few, I spoke to a few people about, and I know a few people have got this opinion, is that with five games, like, for example, and I think the men's game as well, to a degree, is guilty of this as well, it's going to be more towards the kind of bigger clubs. So, for example, with five games, Celtic play Rangers in Glasgow City, they, they three will play each other six times. So that could be six of your games, the minimum. So that is, that's another kind of concern. Yeah. Do you then have the situation where you've got these three clubs just dominating their games and you've got nine other clubs just out in the cold? Is that kind of thing? Is that, a, that's yeah. obviously something that I think the, the, the kind of, the men's game suffers from as well. But I do agree with that, but. As it does because it's always the same teams and, I think, um, you know, an Alapa, you know, they, they would get picks um, mm-hmm. the games that, that they will show. Um, I think, and also, you know, you know, I was looking at, uh, you know, 16, 17, 18, you know, hip, hips were, hips were flying, mm-hmm. you know, in, in up competitions, hips were winning absolutely everything, right? Yes, league-wise, they weren't ex- as consistent, but, you know, as Hib Spartans, uh, those teams start to, you know, to pick up again. You know, you you always go, you you do always get really competitive games mm. between between those teams as well. So, I would I would think that I would like to think it wouldn't just be those automatic. Yes, I think you know those games are exciting to watch because they are tight. You know, um, but I think that maybe they'll think about it a bit differently. Because you'll have Alapa with games, and mm-hmm. you'll have so how how that works will probably mean that you know there's going to be more games shown anyway. Uh, BBC Scotland, you know, for the past couple of years they've been live streaming as well and and doing pitch side stuff. So if you look at it in the round with all of these, you know, these three key partners, plus what the clubs are doing. You should get to the point where on a Sunday you can actually go, oh, what what game? If I'm not going to a game, what game can I pick to watch? Mm-hmm. So that's the thing. So yeah, I totally take your point that um, there'll be an assumption that it will be those big games, but in the women's game, it's not as clear cut as that because mm-hmm. a lot of the other teams provide really good, strong competition and and uh, upsets. Uh, against you know who some of those teams that are deemed as the big teams, um, and for me the 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 the, the most the best games you get are, are from these consistent teams, mm-hmm. um, because you can have big teams that are pretty inconsistent, and then you can have those teams that are kind of nipping on their heels that are putting in better performances. So I think in the round, if you t- if you take a step back, if we've got more games being shown in a multitude of different platforms, that's a really good thing. Yes, if you're a, a City fan and a Rangers fan, and yeah, your game's in Sky, great. But I, I, also, if you're a Hibs fan and a Spartans fan, it might be getting live streamed at Spartans, it might be in BBC Scotland online, and it might be on Alapa. So actually, I think you're, you know, if, if you worked it out, you're probably going to get access to a much ha- bigger amount of games. Mm-hmm. I don't really care where it is. The fact that Sky are going to be showing games is fantastic. And that gets people, in, you know, interested in the game generally. But actually, as long as people can watch games and have free access to it as much as they possibly can, that's a really good thing. So let's hope that that just adds another layer of of exposure, um, to everything else. But yeah, I mean, that I have heard, you know, some of those points about the it will be the same games, but let's see. It might not be. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's I, I think it's very exciting regard. I think there's going to be a lot of we're going to see a lot of changes to the, the women's game and it's it's obviously going to just progress and progress. And that's kind of something I wanted to bring towards you as well. Like 
you said that you've been on the you've been kind of doing marketing with the S, the kind of SWF since 2014 and obviously you've kind of you've moved up what's the kind of like things you've noticed with commercial improvements as well because like social media we know is a brilliant tool but it can also be a tool that can kind of go yeah. up a different way but when yeah. it comes to the women's game how important is that tool being and obviously building sponsorships and things like that because as you as you said like when you kind of went in it was it was a very different situation with the there was a um, kind of the word I'm trying to go for has escaped me but there was a maybe a stigma with the women's game like it wasn't as much there wasn't as much investment in it but now you see there's a lot of teams going full time there's a lot of teams kind of going that direction it seems to be more that there's a an upper progress kind of just as just all the time it just seems to be evolving so quick is that something you've noticed since the kind of eight years have been there yeah I mean uh, you know we're at the point where you know people approach us mm-hmm. uh, because they want to find out how to get involved in the game and I think uh, one of the things that that we kind of decided in 2016 was that we we wouldn't accept alcohol or gambling sponsorship because you know the majority of players affiliated with SWF are, are, are under the age of 18 and that was quite important for us because you know I think uh, you know certainly when you look at the west of Scotland and parts of Scotland there's huge 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 problems with, with alcohol and, and gambling and and actually what what that's resulted in is you know um, SHAP becoming a, a, a partner since 2019 and that was driven by them wanting to do research within women's football and speak to, you know, younger players, uh, first team players, and actually benchmark that against conversations that they'd also had with with males, male, the male uh, game, men's game, and the boys game. And, and actually what came out of that was that, uh, you know, the young female players were very put off drinking alcohol because they wanted to achieve what their role models have achieved and get into that first team and train a bit more. So that was really good. So what you find now is that, you know, it's almost, um, we wanted to create kind of a clean sport, you know, where it's, it's not, it's not got a lot of the the kind of baggage that, that some, some sports have. Um, And I think that that's been good because, we we you know we we've come across um partners that that just won't invest in in some men's sport because they don't like the associations with gambling with alcohol with other things um in terms of of their kind of corporate strategy so and i'm not saying you know i'm a marketer i know that um it's a minority of people that 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 have issues with alcohol and gambling and i know that the um the demographics of football fit very well in that in men's football and I absolutely understand that but I think when we've got such a, a high percentage of players who are under 18 um, we need to be making sure that we're trying to to put out their positive messages because you know mental health well-being is extremely important especially with girls yeah, yeah. with girls so so yeah so talking about your commercial part you know it, it's almost like those building blocks when we started to you know online social media hugely important to try and and push that message out it, you know it's free if you use it properly it properly can work really well um we you know over the years i've had people approach us to say i, I want to get involved how do i get involved and and the, the partners that we have are it's very much partners it's not like write a check walk away mm-hmm. very involved and and initiatives and, and what we're doing and, and how they can help. And we're speaking to uh, hopefully a, a, a new partner, a significant partner that will be coming in, I would think, in 2023 um, about, you know, the cost of football, the cost of sport. You know, every wee girl and wee boy, really, you know, should be able to go and play football. Uh, and actually, with all of the, the cost of living, impacts you know parents carers are are going to be in a position where they're like well you know it's costing me x amount of money to take you training twice a week and pay your subs and to do all these things so i think you'll see from our partners going forward we're, we're going to be looking heavily very closely at how we make sure that 
people are able to participate in football without having to worry about these costs. Um, so that's going to be something that we'll hopefully be able to talk about a bit more next year. We've been having conversations, uh, very detailed conversations for about oh, eight or nine months now. And so that's really good. And and again, it's it's partnerships. It's about how we make an impact. You know, we've just um, partnered with S1 Jobs and that's about people in football, maybe at the end of their playing career as well. How do we help them, you know, whether they're, they're recreational players or whether they're, you know, semi-pro how can how can S1 help kind of advise and get them into other aspects within the game and out with the game? Uh, and they are uh, contributing to um partnership with um the SFA referees team, mm-hmm. which is, you know, cutting costs for girls and women to get involved in refereeing. So we're all we're really excited about that. So you'll see a lot more of those really tangible partnerships rather than write a check, name on something, mentions on social media. It's not like that. It's very much like, what can we do? How can we make a difference? Because we now manage, I think, 83 competitions across Scotland. Yeah. Going to WDF, it was about four or five. So the, the, the coverage that, you know, the SWPL shifting over, um, you know, and, and having that kind of separate team, uh, on it, uh, has allowed our staff team to 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 really reset and look at everything that we need to for all the other aspects of the game because SWPL obviously took up a lot of time, um, quite rightly, but now we're able to go well. Actually, you know, championship, league one, all of these things. You know, if you look at where SWPL was in twenty fourteen, it's not dissimilar. You know, it's probably a bit these leagues are much further on than that, but literally we were building something up from nothing because there wasn't an identity. There wasn't, the players weren't going, I, I'm participating in the in the SWPL. I feel really proud yeah. about it. They were just like going out and playing every week. They didn't have any identity with it. We've achieved that. It's now got to the point where SWPL as a brand is really strong. It's developing even further. We're very proud of what we've done there. And we're looking at how we do that across the entire um range of 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 the leagues that we manage and working closely with the Scottish FA in terms of those participation goals as well um but yeah the commercial aspects of it have been a lot um probably a lot easier I would say because you know for years it was we didn't have any staff we actually had one person so it was me and, and other members of the board who we are you know hands on knocking down doors writing proposals um, with the with the staff we did have, and having those conversations, and now we've got a really good team in there, and um, people are coming to us saying, "Can we talk to you? How can we work with you? How can we contribute a bit to to the growth of the game?" And that, for me personally, is really, really, it's just lovely. It makes me feel quite emotional sometimes because what we were doing back in the day was just it was so difficult, so difficult. Um, but now we're in a in a in a position we will hopefully see these commercial partners. You know, grow and grow, and, and we have an anonymous donor as well. Who, you know, obviously Mr. James Anderson dug uh, the game out of a massive hole during COVID by by his contributions to yeah. the men's and women's game. And off the back of that, we have a, a donor who I've met, who's absolutely wonderful, who contributes money to to SWF. We get a hundred thousand pounds a year from her, and that's absolutely. Um, vital you know through this tr- through the scottish football partnership trust so it's gifted there as well which is great but these kind of things are really important and we want to get to the point where we don't have to rely on these things to be able to do what we're trying to do and develop um and i think as the next kind of 12 months pushes on we'll see more and more partners like that so it's just mm-hmm. it's really heartening to see that people actually are interested and they want to give something um, that's been a really important development, I think, from us banging down doors to now people saying, well, actually, I want to get involved. And you can tell the people that want to get involved for the right reasons and one those that maybe want to get involved, maybe not for the right reasons. You know, so I think we, we are also very, um, you know, you might say, well, how is there a wrong reason to, to invest? But actually you want people who really are not trying to make themselves 
look a certain way by mm -hmm. doing it. We want them to care mm -hmm. and be a partner. So those are the kinds of relationships that are very much, you know, I, I play hockey still. I'm the president of Giffnet Tennis Washington Hockey Club. You know, it's uh, getting investment into sport is not easy, mm -hmm. um, but it's much easier for us, for sure. Absolutely. And that's obviously another point as well. Like, when you look at participation in like women's football over the years, I remember kind of when I was young, if you want, if like a, a girl wanted to play football, she had to go to a boys' club in most cases. And you see now, like, I mean, we've got four, when we cover four leagues, and there's, you know, what I mean, there's, I think there's 10 teams and there's eight teams and two leagues and 12 teams and the other two. It shows you just, that's a lot of people playing women's football, and that just shows you it's, it's came on so much and so many. People want to play, and I think there was a stigma with that. Like I don't, I think now, like I speak to so many players, and they're all they're all so proud just to play, and you just see how that progression over the years. Like how big of how big is that? You've noticed as well. Like there's such a difference compared to even ten years ago. I mean, when I was at um, primary school, my sister and we went to Meadow Lee Primary in the south side of Glasgow, and um, I we were brought up. You know, never I've never once thought of. I can't do something because I'm a girl. I've just, you know, my dad and mum brought us up that we could do anything that we wanted. Yeah. And that's uh, something that, that drives me even today in my career. You know, I've never felt I can't do something. And I played football at school every single day with boys, like, and I was an extreme part of their group. And I didn't even, you know, it, that was just what we did. And I was in the football team and, uh, you know, and then and then four years later, my my sister's the same, and she played for uh, East Kilbride and Mary Hill and Glasgow City and and teams like that back in the day. Um, but but for many girls, they don't have that mentality. So the slightest thing that knocks them back, that's it. They just won't they won't do it. Whereas I'm not like that, and my sister wasn't like that. You know, it, you just you want to do something, you do it. Um, so. The fact that, you know, there are many more opportunities. And I remember after the Euros, we I've been saying, look, we need a club finder tool. We need if parents, guardians, carers, players want to put, put in a postcode where you live and it spits back basically clubs, times of training. We've got that, right? So the, the, the data in that, just actually putting that together is fantastic because you've got all these clubs, all these training sessions available for girls and women now. And I think, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I've become really good friends with Rose Riley, which is, yeah. she just she just brightens up every time I see her. She just brightens up my day. She's wonderful. And when you look back at, um, you know, her time where she was belted every day as a five-year-old for playing football in the boys' playground, and then she was expelled from high school for playing football every day and all those battles, you know, I think... Um, even from 20 years ago, 25 years ago, it's just common practice that girls play football. Although there are some schools uh, I have heard about who have, you know, the P teachers like, you're not allowed to play football, which in 2022 is a bit ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But by and large, um, it's 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 brilliant. It's dramatically different. Um and that's the way it should be. It should be equal opportunities for everyone. If if you know there's a boy that wants to play hockey or whatever they want, they should be able to do that. If a girl wants to play football, she should be able to do that. And I think um, you know, actually one of the things that I, I found out, you know, being involved in the game is that it's actually the culture in this country. There's just this undercurrent of A bit of sexism and people don't realise it. Like they don't realise that they are thinking in that way. And actually it's a lot of parents, you see it, um, and they don't realise it. But, you know, I, one of my really good friends has got uh, a boy and two girls and um, they do whatever sports they want. You know, the, the girl and boy were at you know, rugby mini kickers together Monday and a Saturday morning. Uh, you know, I've got friends whose son really likes rugby, but also likes ballet, right? Mm -hmm. And I, the ballet has really helped his rugby because now he's a teenager and he's really good at rugby. Yeah. And I think there are still, there are some parents out there who are like, you're a girl 
So we're going to dress your head to tone pink. And that's not, you know, if you want to wear that, that's fine. But you're going to go to dancing and you're a wee boy and we're going to get you all your football kit and you're going to play football. And actually that happens a lot. And that's not the kids. That's the parents saying, here's your options. Do you want to go to dancing? Do you want to go to whatever it is, you know, and do you want to go to football and do you want to do these things? And there are a lot of parents that do that. And that's difficult because that's how they think. Whereas my parents, you know, in the 70s were like, or the you know, 80s, do what you want. Mm -hmm. You want that, you do that. So actually, I think more exposure for women's sport generally and girls' sport is only going to help some parents and carers who are like, actually... I didn't realise that. I didn't realise that, all right, I never thought of it. So there's just a bit of a mindset thing. And there still are, sadly, um, a lot of sex people out there who, who think that women shouldn't be participating in anything, you know, which is mind-blowing, to be honest, for me. Um, so there's all these barriers, you know, that, you know that, that I'm sure there was a wee girl, um, who is it? It's a few years back, and... Um, she got they got beaten like four nil or something, and she said, "Oh, my dad will just say I shouldn't be playing because we lost four nil." And so for for her dad, it was like, "Oh well, you got beaten four nil. I told you you shouldn't be playing football," and that was really sad, and it made me really really because actually they'd played really well, and actually they were a really good little team. Mm -hmm. Didn't perform in the day, you know, it just didn't go for them, but you know, that our dad, that that was, he didn't want her to play because he didn't think girls should be playing football. So even in 2022, it's a lot of those attitudes that we need to break down. And, you know, I was, I was supporting the Lionesses. I thought they were absolutely fantastic. And and that's a different, you know, in, in women's sport, women's football, it, it's, we knew up here that that would be fantastic for the game. And mm -hmm. it has to be fantastic for the game, whether it's, you know, England or, or Wales or Scotland or Northern Ireland, whoever it is, um, that was brilliant for the game because of the exposure and everyone saw it and it was really fantastic to watch. You know, it's like it's like the you know, USA in the 90s, you know, back in the day with Mia Hamm and all of that. Um, all of these things are hugely important and will make people realise who maybe have different opinions than we do that actually, do you know what, that's a it's a really good thing for my daughter to to be part of. Um, so yeah, it's, it's it's still a bit weird in some places. Some of the perceptions that I just I'm like, how can you think like that? It's mm -hmm. a bit strange. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I think that's you've kind of you've hit the nail on the head with that as well. Like there is, there's more. Like you see a lot more kind of maybe not. You see a lot more people open about like playing football. Like I think Twitter's a wonderful thing for that because you interact with so many people on a daily basis and they're proud of what they're doing. Yep. And it's just so remarkable to see and it's just obviously something you want to see progress as well. I'm now at the stage, before we wrap up, I'm going to put you in the spot. Will Scotland win on Tuesday night? Will Scotland qualify? Give us your prediction for the... Is this the biggest game in Scotland in, in many years for Scotland? Yes. Yeah, it is. I definitely would say it is, yeah. Um, you know... I was I was talking to Rose about this other night because Rose is she was she went got to go and hang out with the squad the other day and she's such a yeah. honest tour of football you know she had one to ones with all the squad and was basically yeah. like right this is how you've been playing this is how I see did mm -hmm. all of them and I was like what and she went yeah and 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 you know it's it's funny because a lot of the conversations she, she was having with them they were like Do you know what you're absolutely right you know mm -hmm. so I've been talking to Rose about this as well and I think that. Um, I think we'll win. I do think we'll win. Uh, I think we'll win probably 1-0. I would like to think 2. Uh, I think the frame of mind that the squad are in is a really good, positive one. Um, I think that the support's brilliant. Um, I think, yes, it, it's a good Irish team. Absolutely. You've got Vera Pau. She's a wonderful coach. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the way that they're playing for each other is what will 
just push us through. I really do. I think if we if we stay tight, defend well, and hopefully it won't be raining like it was the other night because those pinpoint crosses weren't frequent because the wind was just blowing the ball over the place. Um, I do think we'll win. I, th- I think there's a lot of positivity there. I think mentally the team will be really prepared. Um, so, yeah, I'm confident. I'm going to go for... I'm going to go... Do you know what? I'm going to go for a 2-0 one. I'm loving that confidence. I, I agree. I think Scotland will win. I think it will be tight. I think I I, I thought Austria were a good team and I thought it was Scotland had to dig deep and get that result. I think this will be the same. I think that there'll be a lot of digging down, socks down, hard, hard working, got to get a, a kind of a battle on. But I think there will be, I think it will be a really intriguing game and I am really looking forward to it and I can't wait to, hopefully we see what we saw on Tuesday night. Hopefully we see that, those characteristics that I didn't, I don't think I I don't think what what is what is clear as I I thought they'd be I didn't expect that when I saw how just how I thought when it got to extra time I thought because I thought Austria were growing into the game more in the second half I thought if it goes to extra time I just have my wee doubts but I was mm-hmm. proven wrong and I hope I'm, I hope Scotland do yeah. it I think it'll be brilliant I'm looking forward to it it was yeah it was interesting because there were big parts of the games we dominated. And then Austria would just creep back in with a wee run up the wing, a few wee crosses. Um, but yeah, I think uh, after coming through that, I think um, I think we'll win. But I think it will be quite tough because I think Vera will have done her homework. Yeah. Uh, very much, and I think it'll probably be quite weird for her because that'll probably be the first time she's been at Hamden, or maybe she's been for other games, but it might be the first time she's been at Hamden in 18 years or whatever and the fact that the girls are playing there you know when she left they were playing at Livingston or wherever was available so yeah I think it's going to be a really well I'm so nervous though (laughs) it's going to be a massive night as well and it's obviously we'll 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 do a kind of recap on it later on in the week but Vivian I cannot thank you enough for coming on the show it's been an absolute pleasure I've really enjoyed your company a couple of hours (laughs) (laughs) No, thank you so much. It was really great, really great to catch up. Brilliant. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much to everyone that's tuned in. Please follow our social media and our podcast and YouTube channels for more consistent women's football coverage. We will also have a roundup on Wednesday looking at the SWF Championship and League One Cup, so stay tuned for that. And thanks very much to everyone that's tuned in. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Go.